When I started my booktube channel in October, I had no idea bookish drama or bookish tea was a thing. When I discovered that it was a thing, I made a promise to myself that I was not going to comment on it unless I either A, had an opinion that was different than what I had mostly watched or seen or read on Twitter, or B, I had some level of experience specifically in the this topic being discussed. So for example, I'm not going to get a lot on diversity in book two because this is, I'm like hella white, like ranch on the pizza, oh, let me sneak right past your white. So it's strange that the first bit of tea that I feel really truly compelled to get involved with is not on booktube, but from authortube. Now, I am not an author tuber. I am on YouTube and I am writing, how many manuscripts am I working on now? I don't even know. But I am not specifically in that genre of YouTube. The genre I am in though is indie books. I love indie books. I have how many episodes? I believe three or four episodes of my best and worst series and another one will be coming soon. I have been given a lot of indie books to review. These are the physical ones I have been given. The first of these, right there, I was given in January. Indie authors move fast when they decide they like your work in reviewing. I also have many others sitting in my email inbox. All of this to say, I have a very deep-seated interest in indie authors and reviewing their books. Now, many of these you would not technically consider arcs in that a lot of these are um, the basically the finished copy, what either is or was published, but these were all given to me for free. And as a result of them being given to me for free, you are guaranteed a couple different things. One, reviews on any website of your choice. If I have to make a new account for some forum site that I didn't know was a thing for the bookish community, I can. I believe I recall, yes, Jeannie Chambers asked to make sure that I had put up a written review on a site that I had previously forgotten to. These are sites like Amazon or Goodreads. I could do them in the Barnes & Noble Nook review, although there's usually next to none on there anyway, so if you don't have a lot, don't worry. Secondly, on top of that, the book that I am sent for free will get its own dedicated video, usually around 8 to 15 minutes, give or take, depending on how big the book is and how much I can say without spoiling things and that sort of thing. And that is something that only the books I am sent for free get. If I purchase the book and I like it, I may include it in a recommendations list or the best and worst of indie book series that I have or that kind of thing. But the only books that are given the whole one video to themselves treatment are the books I get for free because I recognize that that's hard to give away your your precious babies, your book babies for free. And I am forever grateful to get them. That being said, not every indie author agrees that they should be given for free. So today we're going to talk about Kristen Martin. Now, this is not the first time she's had controversy in the bookish community. However, I'm not going to talk about the other controversy because again, I don't talk about controversy that I am not well versed in or that I do not have an opinion that is different than the opinions or the backgrounds of other people that have talked about it. So I'm going to leave the things with the the classes being scams and all of and those rumors uh, to author tubers. But what bothers me is how Kristen Martin treats her arcs. Now, as of right now, as it stands when I am filming this, this is the only way to get her arcs. You must go to her Patreon page, go to the level $50 tier or just the $50 tier, sign up, pay $50, pay $50 for three months, then you get an arc. Now, I don't know, and this would be the thing that I would need to look more into, it still doesn't make it okay, even if it is the case, but it may be that once you get that three month 
subscription, you just repeatedly get ARCs. Like you don't have to wait another three months for the next one, but I'm not sure, especially because most of the time, even the most prolific indie authors aren't putting them out once a month. So you're still gonna be able to wait a couple months for the next ARC. So basically every ARC that you were given is going to be at least $100, if not 150 This is not okay. A, these are actual uncorrected proofs. So this is not like these, where it is the actual finished copy just given to me for free ahead of publishing. These are actual uncorrected proofs that may still need more editing. And B, this is skewing biases way in favor of the author above everything else. Now to explain what I mean by skewing biases and how those can affect your reviews, I want to talk about this one. Star Mark Rising by Shami Stovall. This was the first book and this was the final copy given to me ahead of publishing for free. I loved this book. I still do. That's, I don't know why I said that in past tense. I'm desperate for the second one. I gave it five stars. Rave review. Whole video to itself. I knew nothing about Shami Stovall before she offered to send this to me. It was the first time I'd ever heard the name. She emailed me. I might have followed her on Twitter right after I got the email, right after we agreed to this exchange just out of habit. But I knew next to nothing. And because I knew next to nothing, I was happy to gush in the video because there was no chance of me being viewed as someone that was saying those things just because I was friends with her because at the time I wasn't. Now we do have a, I guess you could call it a working relationship because she sent me the next book she's publishing and I'm excited for this one. But again, the relationship started because I loved her work, not her. This isn't to say that I will never review books from authors that I know or people that I have already interacted with. I have currently, I am on, I guess, waiting list or waiting for him to get more copies of a book called Tavern from a very good friend and Twitter mutual of mine that we've known each other for a couple of years now. But even then, I have not paid him over a hundred dollars for the right to review his book. And love yet Destin, but I wouldn't <laughs> would not pay $150 for the arc of, of any book. Now I know some people are saying, oh well, there's also a course involved in that tier, and it is about that, or it's worth more than that. But of course that goes back to it's actually worth that much. But again, that's author tube tea for them to spill. But the problem is, is that as far as I'm aware, no one else gets ARCs for free. I believe the author Kristen Martin discussed on Twitter that she believes it's too expensive, shipping and all of that um, as justification for including it as a tier. So it comes across as yes, the only ARCs that are being sent out are those from the $150 worth of Patreon. So that means that every single review that is ever going to be done ahead of publishing is going to be done by someone who is dedicated enough to the author to give her $150, which skews everything. I, I know I keep saying that, but it's still a point. You will not be able to truly trust any review that comes out of those books. I probably won't pick up any of her books, A, because I'm not a fan of all this shadiness, and B, I wouldn't want to review one of those and risk being seen as one of the, the people that's just reviewing it because I'm already a diehard fan of her YouTube channel. There's no point in it. I would lose my own credibility. Even the, as a reviewer, you always have to think ahead and admit your biases one way or another. If you love the author as a person, you need to admit that. If you didn't gel with the surrealism, but surrealism isn't your thing, you need to admit that. So imagine reviewing and having to admit that you paid $150 for that book. Would anyone pay attention to the rest of your review? Or would it be a comment section full of WTF, did you spend that much money for an arc? <laughs> so in general, 
coming from the other side, not as a writer or an indie author, coming as an indie reader and an indie reviewer. This makes us look bad because I don't want it to seem like I'm pushing out the five star hyped reviews from my friends or people that I'm huge, huge, like YouTube fan of. I want to still seem legitimate as a reviewer, as a booktuber. I want people to come to my reviews and know that I'm going to be as unbiased as possible or that I'm going to flat out tell you at the beginning all of my possible biases for or against a thing in order to give you the most honest review I possibly can. But this type of behavior skews it and makes it worthless. Not a single one of these reviews is going to be worth anything because not only are they coming from fans or friends, they're coming from super fans, super duper fans, fans that can spend $150. It makes the reviewer look bad. And so again, probably will not be reading, buying, or reviewing anything from Kristen Martin. I don't think I'm alone in that. And this video has gone on for a while, so I think it's probably about time to wrap it up. But in general, I am grateful for all the books that I received from indie authors for free. I recognize that that is a huge expense on your part just to get a review out, just to get word of your book out. However, I will say Starmark Rising has actually had pretty decent sales. Anyway, <laughs> if you are an indie author and you would like to send me a copy of your book, I will tell you right now, it will be July at the very earliest that I can get to it. But again, I love everyone. You can email me at my email address down in the description below. I will tell you if I am interested in it. Um, I will not take arcs that I am not interested in just because it doesn't behoove either of us. But in general, I want to keep the art of reviewing books as professional as possible because indie books deserve it. They are that good. There are those that, yeah, maybe don't make the grade, but there are also fantastic ones. And I don't want the two to get mixed up just because someone is a super fan and paid a lot of money to get it. And with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.